My name is Daniel Hine. I am a Caldecal System Solution Architect uh, at Informatica, um, based in Australia and work in the APJ region. And today I'm going to show you uh, mass ingestion process database to cloud. So what this process does is it allows you to migrate hundreds or thousands of database tables to the cloud using uh, intelligent cloud services, and it dynamically creates mapping tasks to cloud application integration. So not just create, but also execute this task. So, uh, and if a customer wants to use a solution, what they need? First, they need the ICS license, uh, CDI and, and, and CAI. They also need the connectivity license for the source and target connections uh, created in the administration console. They're gonna need to import six CDI and CAI assets. And this is part of a zip package that contain templates, the process, tabs connector, and so on. And then they're gonna call a web tab, a CAI process, after publishing it, passing the following parameters. So the first one is the source DB schema name that usually matches the source connection schema, the mapping task template name, that is a fixed name, but you can, you are most welcome to edit that you're gonna also pass the bucket or container name for cloud cloud data warehouse target, such as Amazon Redshift and Azure SQL Data Warehouse. And then the source connection name that was created in the administration console, and the type connection name and the prefix to be used for each new mapping task. So bear in mind that each ta source table gonna have uh, one uh, task and the prefix I inform here is gonna be used for each of these tasks. So the solutions here, I briefly uh, mentioned, but we are using cloud data integration and cloud application integration. And a few use cases that we can relate in this uh, deployment is the bulk ingest of hundreds of data sources into a staging area or target database. Uh, obviously here, without uh, any transformation, just the migration of existing open data warehouse to uh, cloud data warehouses. And you can also replicate databases like as SQL Server or Oracle to AWS, RDS, or Azure SQL Server, and so on. The solution also allows, allows you to save time and money. So our customers save time and money because it's gonna automate uh, the the database duplication. So instead of creating task by task, you can use uh, this process to replicate uh, thousands of tables. Another thing uh, that we can uh, relate very well is the usage usage of templates. So as you might know, uh, ICS is a template-based solution, and uh, that allows you to, of course, uh, reuse objects and automate the change. And in this case here, we have uh, one specific mapping uh, template that has been fully parameterized that's gonna be used to create um, all the tasks individual source table. In regard to cloud application integration, um, we, how we can relate here is, first, we are supplementing uh, the propagation of data sets that CDI can do with cloud application integration. We also uh, have uh, created composite services that they do different things. They, they, they can log in, they can create tasks, they can update connections and so on. We can also read database uh, information, so like our on-prem database, such as the number and the, and the table names that we're gonna process and we are uh, doing a process automation as well. So we are automating this database replication process. How the solution works, so we're gonna have a HTTPS request. They're gonna call Informatic Cloud API many times. You're gonna have some logs and some a loop there as well to process table by table. You're gonna also read an Oracle database to get all the table names that, and the number of tables that we're gonna process. And then we're gonna uh, finally have a HTTPS response, letting us know how many tables were processed and if the process was uh, executed successfully. The solution architecture looks like 
this. So we're going to read an Oracle database schema. We're going to get the list of source tables. We're going to update the source connection with this schema. We're going to update the template just for reference. And then we're going to create mapping tasks and trigger the execution of this mapping task. These uh, process, these steps are executed in cloud application integration. In CDI, in cloud data integration, we're going to run the task. We're going to create the target table at runtime. We're going to populate the target, and we're going to monitor the job. The components, the assets we are using here, uh, as I mentioned, one mapping template, fully parameterized mapping, a mapping task that's used for your reference. You can see after you run the process, you can see that this task uh, is very similar to all the tasks that are being created. You're going to have the service connector, the connection, the order connection to, li to list the source tables to be migrated, and you're going to have the process. That's how the process looks like. But let's go through the demo. Um, I'm going to share this slide and also a document that explains how to deploy the solution and, and going to be very easy to understand. But the demo is going to also clarify a few doubts that you might have. So I, I am logging into Intelligent Cloud Services. Here you can see the assets that we are using uh, that are available in, in cloud application integration. So the first one is the, the service connector and all the actions that we are using here, the actions that execute the task to get the task details, the template, to update the, the connections, and also to create the task. So based on that service connector, we have created a connection. Then that's where you're going to pass uh, your credentials. And then you have the, pro the process here. I'm allowing anyone to access that, so allowing anonymous access. But you can change that to allow, uh, to allow only specific groups or users. We're going to have some input fields that are the parameters that I just mentioned uh, in, in the slides. And we're going to have the output field that's just going to be the response, how many tables are being processed. In regard to temp fields, we have first the list of tables they're going to process, and also the number of tables they're going to process. So here, here you can see the process. We're going to log in to ICS. We are using the, the connection that is uh, points to the Informatic Cloud REST API, service connector. And we'll do a few things here. We're going to update the source and target connections and get, sorry, get the details of these connections, like internal IDs. We're going to get the template uh, IDs as well and for the information. And then for each table that has been retrieved here, so bear in mind that here I have uh, limited my query to get only four tables. But if I remove these two uh, uh, where clauses, I would get every table of my Oracle database that's here, and that is part of this database schema. So for each of these tables, I'm going to process the, the record, and I'm going to create a task, and I'm going to execute, and then I look back. If everything runs fine, I'm going to get a response. Let me know how many tables I'm going to process. Okay? So that's how the post looks like. Um, I'm going to also uh, share this document that you can use if you wanted to deploy that. There's lots of information here, and you can use that as a reference. And I'm more than happy to help you as well if you have a further question. But now let's execute this process. So I have published this post already. So we're going to have the proper details here, the steps URL, and that's the steps URL I'm using in Postman. I don't have any authorization. I'm allowing anonymous access. But if you change that, you're going to have to pass here your user ID and your password. You're going to have the headers, content type, and a body. And that's the input fields that are required. As in this case, my target is target registered. That's why I have to pass the bucket name. That's our AWS best practice. Uh, we stage the data in S3 and then load the data to Redshift. It's also for performance uh, requirements as well. It runs faster. Okay. And then I have my source connection. This connection has been created in uh, ICS. So we're going to have my source connection. 
my target connection, and also going to show some examples of this process running and migrating database tables to Snowflake, BigQuery, and SQL uh, data warehouse. And then I have here my prefix, that the prefix is going to be used, and my schema name that I am reading as part of my storage connection. So I have sent this already, and I got here a response. So four tables are going to be processed. Please check mapping task execution details under my job and mapping task definition in the default project folder. So let's navigate to the default project folder. We should have the tasks there. They are here. And if I want to check the execution, I want to just go to, to my jobs. I'm going to see the tasks that were created here and were executed. Okay? You can see here the prefix, MEP, replicate, or registry, and then the table name. So that's the prefix that I have passed my request. Now, navigate to Redshift, I should have these tables here. So I dropped the tables before, but now if I query one of the tables, for instance, it should be here in Redshift and should contain some data. The table is there. So let's do the same now to Snowflake. So I'm going to connect to Snowflake, and also connect to BigQuery. I'm going to show BigQuery as well. That's the tables I have in BigQuery. And I'm also connect to uh, SQL uh, Data Warehouse. I have some tables here, but I'm going to uh, add further tables here. Okay. So here, you can see I have dropped the tables. So if I query any of these tables, they shouldn't exist in Snowflake. It does not exist. Uh, and the same BigQuery, you can see here there are no tables. So let's call the same process now. So I'm going to have my the URL is the same. There's no flake. I don't have I don't need a bucket name. My connection, target connection name now is no flake SCA CDP. So let's see if this connection is available in uh, SPS. So I have my connection here. No flake connection. And then so let's execute that process again. I got the same response because I didn't change my query my source database uh, query. I'm still getting only four tables. Uh, however, I should now have four additional mappings in CDI. So the methods are here, and you can see that the first fix that I use is different. So let's uh, confirm this. So my prefix now is Snowflake instead of Redshift, and the tasks should be running now. So they are running, they have been queued, and they are running. If I want to do the same for BigQuery or SQL Data House, it would be exactly the same thing. I have a Google BigQuery connection. And as you can see, um, I got the same response and uh, load this data to BigQuery. So if I navigate now to uh, Google BigQuery, or now just, uh, of course, after the tasks are running, so Snowflake should already have the tables. So if I query that tables, I should have the data here now. Data is there. And so is the contacts table and so on. And BigQuery, let's see after the execution if the data is available there. So I have executed the uh, process call to load the data to BigQuery and also to speak with the house. So let's check the results there. So I am in BigQuery now. That's the tables I used to have. I want to uh, refresh this and I'll have all my other four tables here as well. And if I go to SQL Data House, let's see if my task for SQL Data House has all also finished. Yes, they have. So two are still running, but it should finish in a few seconds. They have just finished. And if I connect to SQL Data House and I query it, I should get the tables as well. So yeah, I have logged in, and you can see here that the table Ag tag gen has been created. So it's the contact table and also the asset store table and the, and the zero account table as well. So let's go back to our design. So a, a few things there uh, before we finish. So if a customer wants to uh, just call uh, open database to the cloud, you can use this process. So that is 
and they want to, of course, prototype that. They want to, they might select a specific database schema or 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 type schema or just one maybe one fact table in a few dimensions. So you can do that as well. If they want to extend the database, they want to move an open database to the cloud, and if, uh, at the same time uh, move this data house to the cloud. We can do that as well. And finally, uh, if they want to do a leap and shift, they want to move an entire database, let's say thousands of tables, we can also use the mass ingest the B2 Cloud process. Uh, in regard to uh, documentation, I spoke about the Word document that uh, I have created. So this document uh, tells you how to uh, implement the process, how to deploy that, how to use. We also explain uh, the assets that we are using, uh, it goes into the details of the prerequisite, okay, how to configure the source connections, create connections, and so on, uh, how to customize and test the action of the service connector. Here, yeah, it clarifies to you uh, uh, the parameters that you have to pass during the postman call, how to update the source query. So if you want to retrieve, let's say, just uh, tables that start at A, you can change that as well. And how to execute the process for the process in Postman. So I'll put some examples here of the body, of the header, et cetera. And also a screenshot of the, where the tasks are created, the default folder. So anyway, I hope this uh, process helps you. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Please uh, let us know if you have any questions or if you need our help.